Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with another gadget that I think you're going to really like. It's the O-Ray UHD-401 ARC HDMI switch. Now, this product provides a lot of really nice features, which I'll explain in a minute. But before I do, I always like to start a review clip off with a brief unboxing of a product just to show you all the components that are included with the kit. And then I'll give you an overview of the product and list its specifications. I'll take a closer look at the unit itself and explain all the connections you'll need to make to use it with your own equipment. I'll actually come back and do a demonstration here to show you just how simple a product is to use. And then finally, I'll give you a few things to keep in mind if you're comparing the O-Ray switch against other HDMI switches you may be considering. So let's get started with the unboxing. Now, the box is really small, but I promise you everything you need to get started is included with the kit. So when you pop open the box, you'll find the four input, one output HDMI switch. You'll also find a really nice infrared remote control, and this is really handy if you're setting this up in a media center and your chair or your couch is pretty far away from your monitor. You can actually use this remote control to select which input is being sent to your monitor from the comfort of your couch. You can also use the button on the top of it if you're using it on your desk. They also include a DC power supply. It's a USB supply, 800 milliampere hours. You'll plug this end into any standard wall outlet. The other end has a micro USB connection on it, which plugs into the back of the switch, and that's all the power you'll need to operate the unit. They also include a full instruction manual with specifications, connection diagrams, warranty information, and everything else you need to know about the switch. Now, the switch itself has got a lot of really nice features built in, and O-Ray's really thought this one through. So the product name really tells you most of what you need to know about the product. So it's the O-Ray UHD Ultra High Definition. The product can support full 4K at 60 frames a second, which is ultra high definition content on both the inputs and the outputs. So that's handy because if you're using modern media equipment, you want to get the highest resolution possible. It also means you won't have to worry about upgrading the switch down the road. If you've got older equipment and you decide to upgrade that equipment, it fully supports 4K ultra high definition. The 401 refers to four input, one output. So I like the fact that I can connect up four different media devices to it with a single output to my monitor. It just makes it really convenient. And then the ARC portion of it stands for audio return channel. Now, if you're not sure what that is, audio return channel is a feature that's built into the latest versions of HDMI, and it essentially allows you to send audio from your TV back down an HDMI cable to a sound bar. And this product supports that. So if you have one of the modern TVs that has an ARC uh, connector on the back, an HDMI connector, and you've got a newer sound bar that uses ARC, this switch will actually handle passing that audio from your monitor back down to your sound bar. And I'll show you that as part of the demonstration. The other thing that's nice is it's fully HDMI 2.0 compliant, which means all the modern equipment will work just fine with it. The HDMI 2.1 standard came out, but that's really for like 8K monitors and going forward. Those are a little bit off. Maybe you own one of those, maybe you don't, but the 4K today is pretty much the standard. But the big difference between this and some of the other switches on the market that advertise themselves as 4K is they're 4K at 30 frames a second. This is 4K at full 60 frames a second. A couple other cool features about the unit, and I'll point this out in a closer, closer look, is that... O-Ray's really thought through the design of this because a lot of the switches that I've tested in the past, and I actually use this on my desk and I use it in my media center, uh, a lot of the switches I've tested in the past have a couple of connections on the back and then they'll have one or two inputs or outputs on the side and it just makes it really clunky to connect it because if it's sitting on your media center, now you've got HDMI cables popping out the side. It's just really a clumsy way to do it. So all your connections on the back make it really easy for those cables to fall off the back of your media center. And I love the fact that they've added one HDMI connection up front because when I'm using this on my desk, I've got maybe my computer, my laptop, and maybe something else, maybe a Roku player in my office connected up. Those are my three inputs. But every now and then, I'm coming back with a laptop or a phone or something else that will output through HDMI. It makes it really convenient to have that HDMI connection on the front because I can sit it down on my desk and I can plug it in. I don't have to worry about like dragging the switch out and the cables and everything else. It just makes it super easy. Another cool feature about it is they built in the micro USB connection for power. A lot of switches on the market have a proprietary connection, so they'll sell you a power supply, or should say include a power supply that comes with it, that's got a proprietary connector here, typically a barrel connector, and that seems okay until you have problems with the power supply down the road, and now you've got a switch where you've got to go find a power supply, and good luck with that, trying to match up the barrel connector, the voltage, and all the rest of it. The fact that they designed this to handle a standard USB connection means that 
you know, heaven forbid this goes bad later on, these I can find very easily. The other really nice thing is most of the modern monitors have a USB-A connection on the back of it. So you don't even need to use this power supply because it draws so little current that you can use a short USB-A on the back of your monitor to micro USB to this and completely eliminate this, which means you're no longer searching for an extra outlet behind your TV. You can connect it right up to the monitor. And the same thing for your computer monitors as well. So those features are nice. A lot of these that are sold on the market today don't come with a remote control. Now, you'll use this in typically one of two places. You'll have it on your desk switching between different computers or different input devices, or you'll use it in a media center where it's set up on top of a table someplace or a cabinet, and you're switching between maybe a DVD player, or a game console, some other technology, maybe a streaming player, and having the remote control means I can use this in both places. I don't have to worry about getting up from my couch every time I want to switch between my TiVo box and my Roku player. I can actually use the remote control. It allows me to switch between those very simply. And I like the fact that I'm not actually stepping through them. I can directly select which input I want sent to that monitor. Some of the remotes, and I know this is a small point, have a button that you hit. And what it'll do is actually strobe through the different inputs. And that works okay, but I love the fact that I can go directly to an input. Now, if you stay tuned, next I'm going to take a much closer look at the unit and explain all the connections and then I'll come back and actually do a demonstration here to show you how to use the product. The four input one output HDMI switch features a high impact plastic case which makes it very light and very durable. It also has a bit of a brushed finish on the top which gives it a very high end look. On the top of the switch you'll notice a selection button right here. When you tap that it'll actually step through the four inputs then cycle back to input number one and you can use that to make your selection. On the front of the switch, you'll find a full-sized HDMI port, and that's input number one, and that can connect to any media device as your first selection. You'll find four indicators right here that are LEDs. As you step through those inputs, the current input will be lit up with an LED behind it. On the right, you'll find a power indicator. When you add power to the unit through the power supply being plugged into the wall and the micro USB connection being plugged in the back, the unit starts an internal power on self-test to make sure everything is working. When it passes that test, it'll light up that LED, letting you know it's ready to use. On the bottom of the unit, you'll find four rubber feet, and that's nice to keep it in place when you set it on top of a counter. It's not going to actually skid across that surface. On the rear of the unit, you'll find four more full-size HDMI connections and the power port. This is the output HDMI connection. That'll connect up to your monitor, and these are your other inputs. Input number one's on the front. That's input number two, number three, and number four. And again, these are standard HDMI connections. You can use a regular cable between this and whatever media device or computer you'd like to connect up to the switch. And that's pretty much it. Now I'll show you just how easy it is to use the UHD-401 ARC with your own equipment at home. And for this demonstration, I've set up two media players right over here to simulate two inputs. One is displaying an image of a computer. The other one is looping a video with audio attached. I have a TV set up right over here. This has ARC compatibility on the back. And I've got a soundbar set up that's ARC compatible as well. Now I've got the switch in front of me. The first set of connections I'll make are my input devices. So I've got two HDMI cables connected to those. I'll connect the unit that's playing the video to input number two, and the other one that's got a static image of a computer on input number three. Now I'll connect up the TV to the HDMI output port right here, and I'll connect up my sound bar to input number four, which is the ARC plug. I'll plug that in there. So I've got all my connections made. Now I'll add power. I've plugged the power supply in already. Micro USB connection here and I'll plug that right into the back. Now when the switch first comes on, it's doing an internal power on self-test to make sure everything's working internally, and it always starts up on input number one. Now we know that the streaming video is on input number two, so let me switch it to number two. It'll take a second for the adjustment to happen inside the switch to give you the best possible resolution. And there you go. And you can hear the audio is coming through the sound bar, and the only connection I've got is this one HDMI cable right here through the switch. So one of the advantages of the switch is that it actually passes the audio signal through the switch along with the video content as well. Now let me switch to input number three, and you'll see that I've got the static image of the computer, and I'm just simulating hooking a computer up to the input on the back on the HDMI connection. Now you have four different connections you can use, one on the front, two, three, and four on the back, but if you're using a sound bar, you'll plug that into input number four, which is the ARC port on the switch. So you have to give up one if you're using a sound bar. But I think in general, they give you plenty of connections on the switch to do everything you need. And you can switch it between those inputs using the button on the top or the included remote control. It just makes it really easy to control your media content. And it really is just that simple to get it working. I hope you found that closer look and demonstration helpful. 
Now, here are a few things to keep in mind when comparing the O-Ray UHD-401 ARC HDMI switch to others you may be considering. The first thing, and probably most important thing, is the resolution that any switch can support. This product fully supports 4K 60 frames a second ultra high definition media content on both the input and the output. It also supports 4K HDR content, which is the latest and greatest standard. Other switches that mention 4K may only support 4K at 30 frames a second, and they may not support HDR content at all. And that's really important because even if you're using older equipment today that doesn't require a 4K switch, you know you're going to upgrade that equipment down the road, or you may add a new piece of media gear that generates HDR content, and having an older switch that doesn't support the latest standards means you're going to get a reduced resolution on your monitor and not be able to play the HDR content. So buying a switch that does adhere to those newer standards means you won't have to worry about upgrading the switch down the road as you upgrade your media gear. So this one at 4K 60 frames a second with HDR support is really the latest standards on the market. Another two features that are really important about this are the standards for HDMI. This is HDMI 2.0 compliant, and it's also HDCP 2.2 compliant, which means you'll never have to worry about copy protection issues with some of the new media gear that uses that. Another thing I like about the Switch is the power supply, and I've mentioned this before, and I know it seems like a small thing, but it uses a standard USB power supply with a standard micro USB connection. Other switches on the market that include power supplies may have a proprietary power supply with a unique connector on the end of it, and even though they'll work okay when you open up the box and plug them in, over time, if that power supply fails, you're going to have a really hard time finding a replacement power supply for that switch, and without the power supply, you can't actually use the switch. So knowing I've got a USB supply here with a standard connector on the end means I can use a standard wall charger and a USB-A to micro-USB cable to actually power this switch down the road and not have to worry about trying to find that unique power supply. Matter of fact, in my two setups, in both my office and in my media center, I don't even use the power supply because in my office, I have computers with available USB-A ports on them, and I'll use a USB-A to micro-USB cable to power the switch. And in my media center, my large screen TVs have USB-A connections on them as well that are available, and I'll plug the same cable in there and power the switch off one of my monitors. So it makes it really easy to power the switch. Another thing I like about it, and again, this seems like a small point until you start hooking it up, is the fact that they've really thought about cable dressings on this. So all the cables in the back come out flat here. There's no cable connections on the side. A lot of other switches on the market have HDMI connections or power connections on the side. And until you start connecting up the cables, you don't realize that plugging an HDMI cable in the side and having it bow out like this means it's not going to look that great sitting on top of your media center. This one, all the cables are on the back. They go right out the back and drop off the back of the cabinet. I love the fact that they've got one up front as well because in our media center, if my son's having friends over and they've got portable game systems, they can plug right in here. I can plug my laptop in there. It just makes it really easy to have one on the front that I can use as an input and select that to do whatever I need to with that front connection. I also like the fact that there's a remote control included. Some of the switches that are on the market today are really marketed as desktop switches, and there's a switch on the top to switch between those inputs. But if you're going to use it in your media center, it's nice to know you have the remote control because that allows you to control it from your couch, not have to get up every time you want to switch the input. So you get that included in the kit, and you can use the switch or you can use the remote control. Another really nice thing that's important to consider is the fact that it's a company you can trust. It's not some off-brand company. The price is reasonable. So when I look at that balancing act between price and brand responsibility, O-Ray is a company that's been around a long time. They've got a lot of products in the market. They've got a customer service center that's second to none. So if you have issues or questions later on, they can definitely help you with it. And it has a really strong warranty. So when I look at that, that branding versus price, this is right in the sweet spot of having a really good price and a really good brand that stands behind their product. So all those things being equal, I think this switch really stands up well against others on the market for all the reasons I've mentioned up to this point. So I hope you've enjoyed this clip. If you have any questions at all about this or other things we've covered on the channel, please drop those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I also have a link for this down below if you want to go check it out on Amazon just to check through the specifications and see if it's the right switch for you. And that's pretty much it for today. So thanks again for watching and until next time, <laughs> stay nerdy. Mm -hmm.